Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math advisor for Texas Instruments, and this video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at graphing derivatives and antiderivatives of a given function using the TI 84. The example we'll use is a piecewise defined function presented on question three of both the A, B, and B, C exams in 2019. Two of the pieces of this function graph were linear, and another part was a quarter of a circle. Now we've recreated this analytically so we could graph it on the TI-84 even though this was presented graphically on the actual exam. So we've graphed this in a zoom decimal window and this is pretty much exactly the graph that was presented to students. Though You will notice there's just a little tiny gap there near the transition point between one of the line segments and that quarter circle. Now there was also stated in the problem there was an unknown part of the graph between negative 6 and negative 2, but we'll only be dealing with the visible part of the graph here. Now what I want to do first is uh, let's go ahead and graph the derivative of this given function. So I'm going to go to the math menu, pull up the n derivative or numerical derivative, enter our variable differentiation, and we're differentiating y1, so I'll pull y1 from the y vars menu. And then for graphing purposes, we'll actually put where x equals x. So we'll actually graph the numerical derivative across the entire window. Now, let's see if this makes sense. Here our original function graph has a constant slope of negative 1. Our derivative has a constant value of negative 1. Here we have a slope of positive 2. Derivative has a value of positive 2. And here, on that quarter circle, the slope starts out a uh, large magnitude negative and then gets close to zero. And we see that the values of the derivative are matching that. Now I want to take a look at a couple of special points. Now this point here where there's a sharp corner in our original function graph, I've gone over and traced onto the numerical derivative. And notice it really should say undefined there. But the numerical derivative is just an approximation. And so that's not reading out undefined for us. It's something to be aware of when you're looking at numerical derivatives. Similarly, when I jump over to x equal 2, where we have this sharp change in direction, there's really no derivative value there, even though we will get a numerical derivative approximation. It's really just computing a difference quotient of two nearby points. And that's why we're actually getting a value there. OK. Now what I'd like to do next is look at an antiderivative of y1. So I'm going to clear out the derivative. And this time, we'll create an antiderivative using the fundamental theorem of calculus. I'll pick up our uh, numerical integral. And we'll actually use the antiderivative form that was asked for in this problem. So this one will have a bottom limit of negative 2. Our upper limit is our variable x. And we'll integrate y1. So I'll retrieve that from the y vars menu. And to show good form, we shouldn't really reuse x as an independent variable. So I'm going to actually use t. So I'm getting t. And then we'll also use t as our variable of integration. So we have y1 of t dt. And now we're ready to graph, except uh, this will be a, quite a workload since we're plotting lots of definite integral values. So I'm going to change the x res to 2. That will be computing every other pixel for our graph. So now I'm ready to graph. And you can see it's a little bit slow. That's because for every point that it plots, it's computing a separate definite integral of this piecewise function. So that's quite a workload. All right, so we can see it's moving along. And as it approaches its finish, let's go ahead and start seeing if this makes sense. Now our original function graph is the derivative of this graph. So where we see our blue graph decreasing, we should see concave down part for our red graph. Where our original function's increasing, remember it, that means it's an increasing derivative for the red graph that means it'll have a concave up look. And now where the derivative again is decreasing, that corresponds to our red graph being concave down again. 
Now let's look at these special points again. Uh, this is where we had a sharp change in the direction of the derivative from, from decreasing to increasing, and it's corresponding to an inflection point. Similarly, at this other sharp change in direction from increasing to decreasing on the derivative corresponds to an inflection point on our antiderivative graph. Now one of the questions that was asked in the problem was what's the maximum value of this antiderivative over the interval from negative 2 to 5? Well we can see that it looks like it's appearing at the right endpoint. I could try to trace over to that or we'll just go ahead and enter 5 and jump over let it calculate that right endpoint value for our antiderivative and there we see it at x equal 5 we've got a y value of 3.9314187 and that's the maximum value of our antiderivative over the entire interval. Alright, well that winds up this video. For more resources like these please see education.ti.com